If we listened to our intellect, we'd never have a love affair. We'd never have a friendship. We'd never go into business because we'd be cynical. Oh, that's nonsense. You've got to jump off cliffs all the time and build your wings on the way down. Words from the brave Unitarian Ray Bradbury. We are starting the letter B with agents of change. By that I mean abolitionists, feminists, and builders of institutions for social justice. If anyone asks you if Unitarians have really made a difference to society, just point them to the Bs. We'll start with three 19th century Americans. George Bradburn was a Massachusetts politician, Unitarian minister, and a champion for equal rights. He was an abolitionist, a feminist, and a voice for religious tolerance. He was ordained as a Unitarian and took his first job at a Universalist congregation on Nantucket Island, and he married a Quaker. There are many similarities among the liberal religious traditions. Three years later, while George was away on a trip, the congregation sold the church and disbanded. These problems are not new. George was a handsome man and a great orator. He was elected to the Massachusetts legislature in 1839 and became the main spokesman there for the anti-slavery movement. He won repeal of a state law forbidding black and white from marrying together. The central portrait shows him in London at the anti-slave conference of 1840, where he argued for the inclusion of female and non-Christian delegates. He has his hand to his ear because he is already a bit deaf, which became a real problem later in life. In 1843, George joined young Frederick Douglass and William White on a lecture tour called 100 Conventions. In Indiana, a mob of 30 men attacked them. White was badly beaten, and Douglas had one hand so badly broken that it never fully recovered. As some compensation, George and Douglas both lived to see the end of American slavery. Abolitionist Lydia Maria Child called Bradburn, quote, a bold opposer of any limitation of rights by the great graduation of color and the true-hearted champion of women's freedom, unquote. As she added, no one will question his right to a high place among the tried and true. Henry Berg, a New Yorker, was the inventor of the bad comb over. More importantly, Henry founded the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, inspired by Britain's RSPCA. He did it in April 1866, just three days after New York State passed America's first legislation against animal cruelty which gave the ASPCA teeth. April is Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Month. But there's more. In April 1874, Henry was approached by a Methodist social worker, Etta Wheeler, about a girl named Mary Ellen McCormick living in Hell's Kitchen, New York City. Mary's father died in the Civil War, and her mother gave her into foster care. By 1874, the foster mother neglected Mary and beat her daily. Dozens of children's charities and the police had told Etta they could not legally interfere. In desperation, Etta had turned to the ASPCA. Henry got Etta to collect evidence from the neighbors. Just 20 days later, after a public and sensational trial, the foster mother was found guilty of assault with intent to kill and sentenced to a year in prison. Mary Ellen went to live with Etta's sister in upstate New York. Later in life, Mary Ellen married and named her first child Etta. After that, Henry and the ASPCA's lawyer, Elbridge Jerry, got funding from Quaker philanthropist John D. Wright and formed two new societies. Elbridge headed the New York Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, the world's first official dedicated child protection agency. Henry headed the Massachusetts Society. Both charities are still going strong. Clara Barton. <clears throat> the International Red Cross was founded in 1863 by Jean-Henri Dunant, who won the Nobel Prize for it. The American Red Cross was founded in 1881 by Clara Barton. 
Barton's beliefs varied through her long life along a spectrum between free thought and deism, but she was born and raised a universalist and still called herself one in a letter at age 84. Uh, let's get to know Laura. Let's, let's get to know Clara in her own words. She was a staunch feminist who said, I may sometimes be willing to teach for nothing, but if paid at all, I shall never do a man's work for less than a man's pay. She was a practical philosopher who said, economy, prudence, and a simple life are the sure masters of need and will often accomplish that which their opposites, with a fortunate hand, will fail to do. When the Civil War began, Clara became a field nurse. She was at the Battle of Antietam, about which the Union's General Hooker said, every stock in the northern and greater part of the field was cut as closely as could have been done with a knife, and the slain lay in rows precisely as they had stood in their ranks a few moments before. It was never my fortune to witness a more bloody, dismal battlefield. Clara was tending a wounded man and remembers, quote, a ball had passed between my body and the right arm which supported him, cutting through the sleeve and passing through his chest from shoulder to shoulder. There was no more to be done for him and I left him to his rest. I have never mended that hole in my sleeve. I wonder if a soldier ever does mend a bullet hole in his coat, unquote. She was a brave innovator who said, I have an almost complete disregard of precedent and a faith in the possibility of something better. It irritates me to be told how things have always been done. I defy the tyranny of precedent. I go for anything new that might improve the past. The American Red Cross and the ASPCA are great examples of Unitarianism's status as America's invisible mainstream religion. Catholics found Catholic charities, Lutherans found Lutheran charities, UUs usually found secular charities. Every year, 30,000 employees and more than a million Red Cross volunteers mobilize relief to people affected by more than 67,000 disasters. They train almost 12 million people in basic medical skills. They run the American blood donor system and have branched out into vaccinations, weather alerts, food security, and fire safety. In 1994, the American Red Cross was ranked the third most popular charity in America. In 2015, they had revenue and expenses of close to $3 billion each and net assets of $1.6 billion.